Hello and welcome to our webinar, Reinvent Your Fundraising Events. We're going to be talking about how it's important to implement change into your fundraising events, especially if you followed the same format for years and seen a decline in funds being raised. Reinventing your fundraising event can reinvigorate giving, help donor retention, and prevent your guests from experiencing fundraising fatigue. Do feel free to tweet us with any thoughts at UK hashtag raising more, and there's also a question tool in the bottom right hand corner. So if you've got any questions for either myself or Helen, feel free to type them in. Just to let you know, the webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you afterwards. So, what are we going to discuss? So, we're going to start by talking about what your peers are doing. What are the common themes that are happening throughout events? Then we're going to go through what you can do differently. We're then going to pass over to Helen, who's going to chat through the Old Vic and how they planned their event in 2017. We're then going to chat through the themes and the setup and how they aided fundraising. And finally, how to apply those ideas on a budget. Um, so a little bit of background on Givigy. We are a fundraising technology company. And in the last 12 months, we have helped to raise in excess of £25 million for our clients. We've supported over 1,500 events globally and raised money for over 1,200 incredible causes. And that's not just in the UK, but that's across America, Canada, Hong Kong, and Australia. Okay, so what are your peers doing? So the most common themes that we find are silent auctions. So whether that's done by pen and paper or using the silent auction technology like ourselves. You've then got live auctions. So you have a auctioneer up on stage. It does tend to only um, help with a minority of the guests in the room, but it's still a good way of engaging the room and getting them excited about the auction. You've then got things like raffles and prize draws, so where guests put in maybe £20 and have an array of different prizes that they can win. And finally, you have games. Now, the most common game is heads or tails where you have someone up on stage, they flick a coin, and the guest decides whether they're going to go head or tail. Then get down to the last two people, and they normally get dragged up on stage, and, and then the winner goes away with a bottle of champagne or another prize. What you also find is that a lot of these fundraising and events take place in hotels. So, for instance, in London, you've got the Grosvenor, you've got the Hilton, you've got Intercontinental, places like that. Now, these hotels are amazing, but what tends to happen is the, the decoration is mainly limited to kind of table centerpieces. The rooms themselves aren't really decorated. So, what can you do differently? So, let's start with technology. So, you normally have screens around the room. So let's use them, really utilize them to show other things that you can, that really link with the charity. So if you can create a video to transport your guests to Africa or somewhere that's going to link in with your cause, that can really help. You can then use sound, so audio, sound bites, different things like that, again, to transform the room and to really transport your guests to the charity and the cause. You've then got things like tweet walls, um, or at another event, I saw that they did a secret call. So that's where they used headphones, and they linked the sounds that were going through the headphones to the food that was being provided. And they transported their guests away from that event room into a completely different place. You've then got to think about the theme. So a lot of the common themes are black tie dinners. But if you did a different theme, something where guests can have a little bit of fun, so something that they can dress up for, like a masquerade ball, they can have a bit of fun with what they wear. And then if you link that with the entertainment, so have things that link with that, comedians, musicians, artists, different things like that, and you can really bring the event to life. Try and think outside the box as well. A great idea that we're going to discuss with Helen a little bit later on is immersive theatre. It's a fantastic new concept um, and hopefully you'll learn a lot about it 
um, a little bit later on. The main thing to think about is to really capture and engage your audience. You want to use your theme, your entertainment, immersive theatre, if that's what you're doing. You want to make your event interactive. You want it to stand out from the crowd and for it to be something that your guests are going to be talking about for the next couple of years. Okay, so let's go to a quick poll. Um, we'd like to know, have you used immersive theatre before at one of your events? Okay, so the poll is now open. If you just click yes or no, um, that would be great. Okay, so results are coming in. Okay, um, so it looks as if the majority um, are going with no, but we'll just get the last few ones in. Okay, um, and we're looking at 15% of you have said yes, and 85% of you have said no. Okay, so hopefully you guys will learn a lot during the rest of this webinar. Okay, so um, we're now going to pass over to Helen, who is going to chat through the Old Vic and how she um, planned her event in 2017. So over to you, Helen. Thank you, Vicky. Um, so just to give you a little bit of context about uh, the Old Vic, for those who, of you who do or don't know, um, the Ulvik is a theatre in central London in Waterloo. Um, we're actually an unsubsidised theatre, which means that we receive no government funding at all. So we, uh, we are also a charity, so that means that we are solely reliant on uh, income from individual supporters, from corporates, from trusts and foundations, and from major fundraising events such as galas, which help us to raise 3.6 million a year, which is our annual target. Um, so for the past two years, we have hosted our annual fundraising gala, um, which has helped us to raise over 500,000 a year um, and has contributed considerably to that 3.6 million target. So they're really invaluable events for us to do at the Old Vic. Um, as a theatre, um, we have something quite tangible, I guess, that people can see and experience. Um, people can walk through our doors, they can see a show, they can visit one of our bars, um, they have quite an interaction with our venue, so um, it was quite key for us to think about when planning our uh, latest gala, um, how you replicate that sort of same theatrical experience and show people the mechanics of how you stage a production at the Old Vic when we're in a completely different off-site venue. So our planning for 2017 began um, last October, so we had about eight months to plan our event. And as Vicky said, there were many venues we could have considered. So we looked at hotels, uh, but they just didn't feel right for us. Uh, we also considered doing it at the Old Vic, but again, as, a, as a, a theatre that's staging so many shows a year, there wasn't actually the capacity for us to host it there. So we actually decided to go back to the brewery in Moorgate, which is where we hosted our garden in 2016 as well. And so this was quite an important place for us to go back to and suited us perfectly in terms of the design and, and what we could do in that space. So our brief was, how do you bring the Old Vic experience to our guests? Um, our concept was quite simple. Um, it needed to be immersive, it needed to be theatrical, it needed to challenge the expected, and it needed to say, this is the Old Vic, wherever it could. Um, we also wanted to give our guests a very different experience, unlike anything they would experience at other galas, perhaps, or uh, as we had guests uh, coming year on year, we wanted to create something very different for them too. So that was our main purpose of our concept for that. So to implement this, um, we began by working with a theatre director and designer, um, and they worked together on a concept of how do you give the guests an experience of what it's like to be behind the scenes at the Old Vic. Um, and the journey of the guests and the start, starting point was um, how, do you, how do you create that world from the moment the guests arrive uh, into the welcome drinks reception. So we decided to build a beautiful set uh, in one of, the, one of the rooms to create this sort of behind the scenes world. So as you can see from that image, we had these painted scenery flats all around. We had props, we had costumes, we created this very theatrical world um, as guests arrive. We also had some musicians from uh, the Orbix production of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, who you can see in that image, who uh, were dressed in their costumes, they were very theatrical, they were doing their makeup, uh, they were warming up and interacting with the crowd, which, which worked perfectly the minute the guests stepped into the room. 
Um, we also had in the background, we had a soundscape of um, an orchestra tuning up. We had the audience hum in the background, um, so sort of really building the atmosphere. Um, and we also had our stage doorkeeper, Ned, who um, did show calls. So every 10 minutes, they'd get an announcement, counting down to when they'd be going up to dinner. So again, this sort of theatrical, immersive world worked really, really well. Um, we also put around the side of the space the artwork that we had in the auction. So guests were able to grab a glass of champagne, they were able to browse uh, the artwork up close, um, and uh, each of the artworks were labelled so they could see what lot number they were. And then we had Old Vic staff and we had the Gibbage team with the bidding tablets in the room to, so guests could start to make their bids early before they were seated for dinner. So as this idea of kick-starting our fundraising uh, from the moment the guests arrived, this worked absolutely brilliant for us. So on the night after the welcome drinks reception, uh, we had the challenge of how do you call your guests to dinner in this very creative, theatrical, immersive way. So we asked our musicians to lead our guests upstairs, and they walked into this beautiful room, which you can see on this slide here. It was designed to be um, a beautiful paper box theatre, and the proscenium arch was our main stage, um, which was very contemporary. We sort of contemporised a very traditional um, proscenium arch. And then we had beautiful crinolines. We had about 50 crinoline dresses hanging from the rafters, which were lit with neon lights all the way through them, so that we contemporised the space. We made it very theatrical and very on theme to the night. Some of our key ideas that we worked through was, um, was the stage. first point was our staging for the event. So as the stage was the main part of our night, and it's also very much what we do at the Old Vic, we wanted this to be very cleverly designed. So, our main stage was this proscenium arch theatre, which had a thrust stage at the front of it. So the host could walk out into the crowd, they could be in, in amongst the guests. We also created a backstage at the, at the back of the room. And on this stage, uh, we had a grand piano. And the whole purpose of us having a stage at the back was that we wanted all our guests to feel that they were immersed in the night. And so those who paid for the very equal ticket prices didn't feel that they were at, literally at the back of the room. So on that backstage, um, we uh, had dancing moments of entertainment on the night. We also had um, our host, Rob Bryden, and the brilliant Joe Stilgo performing um, an improvised comedy song on the, back, on the grand piano. So this made everybody in the room feel they were part of the night. So this was a, a very, very important part of our, our evening. We also, our uh, other key idea was to have scene changes. And as we had already had the proscenium arch uh, main stage set up, we wanted to make it feel different through different points of the night. So we changed the scenery, we had reveal curtains that changed um, different and showed different parts of the set. Um, and at the very end of the night, when our headline act performed and the DJ, we had a beautiful sign saying, Dare, always dare. Uh, lit up in neon, which um, was is the a replica of the sign that we have at the Old Vic in our foyer. So again, we were trying to um, replicate their experience of being able to walk into the Old Vic at off-site in this very different venue. We also, as I mentioned previously, we integrated our auction items into our design. So all our artworks were um, looking like they were props in this uh, behind-the-scenes world. So it worked beautifully in that context. And also, um, think about selling uh, centerpieces. This was quite a key idea for us, that we had these beautiful paint tin pots, which were our flower, um, flower displays, which uh, linked to the paper box theatre and its painting. And so you can think about maybe selling props and, and the flowers and anything that you've used to decorate your room, so uh, that that uh, helps to generate extra fundraising. And Gibbage can uh, create a Buy It Now button on the tablets. So if any guests wanted to purchase the flowers, they can make the bid on the night and they can take them away with them. So this worked really well in terms of integrating the design to your fundraising. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, so as Helen mentioned there, they really immersed their guests in the Old Vic Theatre. It meant that they closed the gap between the donor and the call. Okay? So we're now going to look at how the theme and the setup aided fundraising and how to apply those ideas. So ultimately, with fundraising, you want to make it accessible for all of your guests to be able to contribute. So with our system, with the tablets, you put them on the, every table. 
As Helen mentioned, we also had the tablets in the drinks section. So you want to be make them accessible and adaptable as well. So as you can see, we've got a screenshot of the tablet from the All Vic event in 2016. And again, we use their color scheme, their logos. So we're trying to match the system to the branding. Okay. Um, anything more to add there, Helen? I was, I was just going to add that actually in terms of our design and the concept and how that actually aided our fundraising, I think um, the message that our design gave to our audience really captured their imagination um, and the set design was beautiful um, but it, but it in alone it didn't work. What worked beautifully was the set design immersed with our entertainment, we had a brilliant host, we had great food, we had really interesting auction lots and the energy in the room was so brilliant that night that I think it all worked hand in hand with the scenery to help the fundraising. People were bidding generously on the silent auction and live pledges and live auction and so hand in hand they all worked really well um, to, to help us raise that extra money on the night and I hope with fingers crossed that our guests will continue to support us year on year by coming to our galas because we create something very different and a very different experience for them. Definitely, perfect. Um, and also, can you talk us through um, how to apply these ideas on a budget as well? Yeah, sure. Um, I think any charity, and we have this very much at the forefront of our mind, is that the necessity is to raise money, not spend money. Um, so we budget very, very wisely for our scenery and creating this immersive world. Um, I think having a very specific budget and sticking to that budget is really important um, and making it as cost effective as possible. Um, we're also very lucky because we have a very um, creative team of directors and designers at our disposal. So this is great that we can lend and ask them to use their skills, but even if you don't have that, think about who you do have in your network. Think about people who can do, uh, donate their time and expertise for free, people who can, uh, an existing supplier perhaps, who can give you something that can help dress your space. Um, look at the resources that you already have around you. Um, we used existing props and costumes in the theatre to dress the space. So very simple things can make a big, big difference. Um, and I think the key is be as imaginative as you can be. As Vicky said earlier, thinking outside the box, um, using what you have at your disposal as cheaply as possible will just help you raise as much money as you can on the night. Exactly. It's kind of about finding a balance, really, isn't it? Because yeah. you want to raise as much money as possible for the charity, but ultimately you also want to give your guests an, an incredible evening. So it's kind of finding that balance there. And also another balance that is a really key thing to think about, especially when using immersive theatre, is making sure that the fundraising isn't lost. And um, to really use your host, have him get up on stage and keep mentioning the different fundraising elements that you have going on. So if that's a silent auction, pointing out which lots are selling more than others, which tables are bidding more than others. And you can really use that information to really build the competitiveness, get the bidding wars going, which is ultimately going to raise you more money. Um, you know, immersive theatre can be amazing, but it can also overwhelm. So the, the main thing to do is to not have it detract from the overall reason for having that event. Um, I mean, have you got anything to add to that, um, Helen? Yeah, I was just going to mention just a very simple thing of looking at the venue you choose. I think that's really important that um, going to a hotel and or a conference room gives you a very different aesthetic than if you were to pick somewhere that's a bit unique and a bit different. Simple things like well-placed lighting or candles or flowers can make such a difference. You don't just have to think about a large-scale set build like we have for our uh, welcome drinks reception. Very, very simple lighting in a beautiful venue can create as equally a different effect. So it's getting that balance right. Definitely. Perfect. Um, the last thing we kind of wanted to chat through was your key learnings. Because obviously you did this event last year in 2016. So oh. what were the main things that you learned from last year that you brought into this year's event? Um, one of the first things we did is we changed our welcome drinks reception actually. Last year we had it in the same main space as uh, the main dinner. 
and um, it just didn't work. It didn't work for capacity because we had over 400 guests in a very small space. And it also didn't work in terms of um, displaying artwork so that our guests could browse at leisure. It was just too cramped a space. So this year we um, created this separate welcome drink reception space which worked perfectly. And um, it also enabled us to have bidding um, starting in the reception, which we didn't do last year actually. So we had the um, the bidding tablets um, and the Give It You team and our team in the in the welcome drinks reception to kickstart that fundraising early. So that was a big difference and made a big difference to our fundraising and, and kickstarting our, our fundraising from the start. Um, and we also, because we were going back to the same menu, we also swapped our room around. Uh, we didn't want our guests who had, take, uh, who had come in 2016 to the 2017 event to feel like they're walking into the same space. So we worked with a different uh, theatre designer who designed a very different room. So the room you're seeing at the moment is our 2016 design. And we swapped the stage around as well. So the guests came into a different staircase. Um, and our proscenium arch theatre um, was at the other end of the room. So this gave us a little bit more flexibility to play with the design and to make the same space feel very different. So this worked really, really well for us. Perfect. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, so we're now going to go to a Q&A. So if you've got any questions at all for either myself or Helen, please feel free to type them into the box now and we'll try and get them answered for you. Um, a couple we've got already, um, so this one, um, I'd be worried that the fundraising element would be lost in the excitement of immersive theatre. Do you have any suggestions on how to ensure we maintain the focus on fundraising? Um, so I'll, t I'll take this one. So as I mentioned, your host is really key. Um, they need to really command the stage when they're up there, get your guests' attention and really draw the attention to the different fundraising activities that are taking place on the night. Um, using the screens is also a really good way. So especially if you have really big screens on the stage or you know plasmas down the side, if you're using them to display your fundraising activity, like a leaderboard for example, you can then draw your guest's attention to that. Um, our system has pop-ups, so when someone makes a bid or a pledge, it flashes up on the screen, and that really catches people's eyes. So it's a great thing to use. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Um, this one for you, Helen. Um, so I don't have a big events team. Do you have any tips on executing an immersive event with very limited resources? <laughs> Uh, very good question. Um, we actually only have a, a team of two of us at the Old Vic, so we're a very small events team as well. Um, but I think it's about I think it's about being creative with who you do have around you and what resources you do have. Um, be creative. Ask um, ask your trustees perhaps if you've got a gala committee or an events committee who works with you on your events. See uh, what resources they have or experiences they have. Um, think about what your colleagues or your friends um, go to see or what they've experienced and how they um, how you can deliver an event in an immersive way through that way and go to see stuff London is full of immersive events or uh, experiential stuff so just go out there go to theatres go to um, cinemas they all have this very immersive um, style to their events so just experience stuff and take that back and then implement that into your own events Perfect, exactly. Um, another question for you, Helen. Um, so pulling from your experience, why do you think immersive theatre works better in a fundraising setting? I think, I think people want to um, experience something. I think people now want to take something away from a night out. Um, people are so used to being invited to a fundraising gala after fundraising gala. And what we try to do at the OBIC is just create something very different. Um, so all our guests walk away with a very different experience than they had the year before. Um, and you set a standard of a type of event that they're going to get if they come to an Orvik event. Um, and also it ultimately aids fundraising because if people have a really good night, they feel they've been looked after, everything's been creative or immersive, um, then they'll um, they'll donate more money on the night or and ultimately support you year on year. So it has such a positive impact to think about how you're staging your event in that way and raising more money. Definitely. 
Um, and we've had another question again for you, Helen. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is from Sarah. Um, she's asked, what was the ROI on your event? Um, and she's also asked, what was the spend and what was the income? So, well, we raised 500,000, raised over 500,000. Um, and we actually, we normally target ourselves with about, oh gosh, about 150 to 200,000 to spend on it. So we make a, a higher return, obviously, than we're spending. Um, but a lot of the support that we get for our events is in kind. So a lot of the support um, from our food to our, our printing to um, our set to our, our, our step and repeat boards, everything we get supported. So we go to a lot of our existing suppliers and supporters to help us for this one night only event. Um, and that helps us ultimately to raise more money. So it works brilliantly in that way, but it's just been created on how we, um, how we fundraise. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Helen. Um, that's all the questions. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know about um, a free event that we've got coming up. Um, it's called Future Proof. Um, and it, we're going to be discussing how you transport your fundraising and events using technology and forward thinking. So it links really well to the webinar we've just done. It's going to be on the 12th of September um, at the London Transport Museum in Covent Garden. We've got some brilliant speakers. So we've got Lou Cameron, co-founder of Nicest Jobs. We've got Kim Roberts, Senior Campaigns Officer and Giving Tuesday Project Lead, and Editor-in-Chief, Live Communication Magazine. Um, and we're also going to have a panel as well, made up of the Princess Trust, Impetus, and Right to Play. You will receive an email shortly after this. Um, so if you'd like to come along, just click on the link in Redchester using the email. We would love to see you there. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Helen, for taking part. Um, if you've got any um, inquiries, feel free to go to our website, www.giveag.com forward slash fundraise, or you can drop us an email, uk.inquiries at Thank you very much.